<laughs> I'm uh, Corey Campbell. I'm the co-artistic director at the Bagley Theatre, artistic director of Strictly Arts, and I'm an honorary member of the Royal Birmingham Conservatory. And Sea View for me is about one family, two sides, you know, one very much middle class, the other side very much working class. Um, and um, uh, both sides really wanting the best for themselves, both sides striving for what they see, deem as greatness, you know. Um, and effectively one incident, one event that takes place um, for the family the series, I think, looks at the fallout of that event, that stabbing. Um, and then we added the supernatural twist element because I think I personally had questions about um, uh, the, stereo, the stereotype around black families, in particular black working class families, and um, the kind of gang violence or or violent crime or exploitation or whatever it might be that uh, black families are often seen black black working class families in particular are often seen as being and i had some questions for my own life which i always ask which is if i could see the future what would i have done differently and i just i just used the series really to play out that scenario and that's what I often do with my art, to be honest. My art is my expression, sometimes my therapy. Um, and I use Sea View, a true story about somebody who was stabbed and, and, um, and that particular event to ask the questions about people's future and what it takes for somebody to change cognitively. And it's about a lot of things, I think. The work kind of is what it is. I think by the time you've put it down on a page and given it away, you've given it away by then and you just got to be comfortable with what comes out the other end. That's like, kind of like universal. Whatever happens is going to be what the universe allows to happen or if you're religious God or whoever it is that's your deity or um, the, the spirituality that you walk with. That's what I love about art. It's already very spiritual. Once you free it up, it just is what it is. You just gotta go on the journey and see what comes out the other end. Ah, and hope that it's any good. <laughs> and sometimes it's not. And that's okay too. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd written a pilot for Sea View, and then um, I just thought it would be cool if we had a writer's room and lots of different opinions and understanding of the world. So we did a call out, bow grade. We did a call out for writers, you didn't need any experience, you could be new, you know, you could be a, a poet or a spoken word artist, we're just saying come and, come and join us. We ended up a, with a write, writer's room of, um, of six people and they, did, they each did one episode and again, they did a brilliant job but that was really difficult to just free over to them. Um, but that was part of the process and um, and they each took one episode each and they were from all, all different walks of life which was amazing and they all had very different experiences and some had never had any of these type of experiences that Sea View explores um, uh, but I think that really added to it and uh, some of them had never written for screen before and you know there was varied experience they were all West Midlands based I believe, which was amazing, and uh, and incredibly, um, what do you call that? Where uh, people ex exploratory, they were incredibly experimental, man. They 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 weren't afraid to just go to places that I hated the idea of, um, and they really weren't afraid to tell me that that's where they were going, whether I liked it or not, which I also loved. It was a great experience. The writers' room was incredible. And I think that they wrote the episodes in seven weeks, I want to say. I can't really remember. You have to look at something else. But it was like seven weeks, I believe. Something like that. Yeah, my, well, for a start, my goal going into Sea View was to make sure that we were able to offer credit 
as in film credits to people that don't necessarily have the experience or haven't been given an opportunity like like Seaview held. In terms of bringing the community with me, I wanted to bring the music from the community and give opportunity and still do want to give opportunity to artists and um, make sure that local artists are being heard. Um, again, like I say, with the writers' room, make sure that it wasn't the usual suspects and that it was fresh faces that are uh, talented and ready to develop. Um, you know, in terms of the great work that Aisha has done with the Media Academy, that was also part of that, that journey and that process. Um, and being able to, to offer the students, again, the ability to be on the set and work with some of these guys who's, you know, their accolades go far and wide um, and have a lot of experience. And I think that, that the process of making it has been more important to me almost than the product itself because that, that was, I've kind of already achieved, if, that's probably why I said I didn't know actually, I've kind of already achieved the thing I wanted to achieve through CV, um, which is to show people, many of whom were about to leave the industry, especially, you know, um, some of the, the crew that we have and the diversity of the crew, they weren't being given opportunity on drama, which was their love and their passion, and, and we managed to do that, and we managed to keep it local, you know, and when it's done, I do hope that people will not be able to say that they don't have the talent pool in the Midlands, or West Midlands particularly, because we got it here. And then I hope that somebody takes on the kind of blueprint that we've created and, uh, and keeps it going, but gives everybody more money. Everybody deserved more money. Great, so now, now that we've finished the review, the process will be um, a premiere November the 10th at the Bargrave Theatre. We're going to screen three of the episodes, there's six episodes, but we're going to screen three of the episodes um, on November the 10th on the main stage. Um, that's going to be an all singing, all dancing premiere. I'm really excited for that, can't lie. Make sure you dress up, you know, you look good. I'm doing a red carpet thing, but I, I want the Pan-African colours still, so I'm going to switch up the carpet and that, this, that, boom, boom, boom. And then, um, and then I, I believe for the rest of the week it has screenings in B2 as well, um, all three episodes again. And then, um, and then it, it goes out to distribution. So very rarely, is, my work is very, focuses on the black community, but it's very rarely for the black community. In fact, I think it's, sometimes quite traumatic for the black community to come out and watch my work. Sometimes I feel so. But the work is to change the perspectives of people who aren't black, I find. Other than fun shows I do like Club To Be and that, they're different, you know what I mean? They're throwaway, but I think for Seaview, I didn't want to do a typical knife crime series. So instead of d focusing on the crime, I wanted to focus on the fallout of that. I wanted to create a family drama that was black as opposed to a crime drama that was, all, that was black, you get me? But I don't like shying away from the fact that I come from um, a community, and I mean my direct community now, as in where I was living and where we grew up and where we moved to and all of that kind of stuff. Oftentimes, because of the area and economics and socio-economic circumstances, there was a lot of crime almost everywhere I came up. Other than, you know, one, one space when I lived in um, Castle Bromwich, which was really nice, actually. I never talk about that much, but it was nice up there, but that's about it. The rest of the spaces that I was in were gang-related, were affiliated and were full of crime. And so what, am I supposed to not give my lived experience and narrative for fear of the stereotype? No, I'm not supposed to do that. My art is, um, is my lived experience. But I also am an artist, so I can't really keep giving the same narrative. So you have to find some dynamic choices to make 
your lived experience or the thing that you're most passionate about in your art to make it unique? Like, how do you create a unique world out of knife crime? And that's another dilemma of being black, because oftentimes white people don't have to consider that when they're creating their work. They can do all kind of stories again and again and again, and nobody will ever question it. But when you have a lived trauma inside you, people don't want to keep being reminded of the same negative tropes. But if it is your lived experience, how do you hide away from that or shy away from it? It's madness. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's how I feel.